Hello everybody and welcome back. So in this Golang tutorial, what we're going to be doing is talking about how to get user input and convert that input into numeric types. So essentially this is going to teach you how to convert a string to an integer or a number or a float or whatever it is you want, as well as how to actually get input from the user from the console. So if I go down here, you can see that ideally what we're going to want to have is something like type blank, and then we're actually going to let the user type in. We want to take what they typed and do something with that. And the example we're going to go through here is asking the user to type in what year they were born in and then hopefully being able to tell them how old they're going to be at the end of this year. So as of December 31st, 2020, that's when this tutorial is, um, you know, well, 2020 is when this is being made. December 31st is obviously the last day. So we're going to tell them how old they will be at the end of this year. So let's actually go ahead and get started with that problem. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually import a few modules that we're going to need to use. So to import multiple modules, we are going to actually put the brackets like this outside of the import statement, hit enter, and then just type a list of all the modules uh, underneath each other. So FMT buff IO, we want OS, and we're going to use another one called str on uh, comp, so string comp, sorry, but we're not going to use that right now, so I'm going to leave that commented out. Now, in case I forgot, what this comment means is pretty much don't read this line. <laughs> it says we don't want to delete this line, we just want it here. So don't read it, just leave it in. Oftentimes you'll see that people will leave comments that are descriptive that are kind of saying like what a few lines of code are doing or maybe you'll see something like this where it's kind of a line of code they want to keep there but they don't actually want to delete so they just tell the program hey ignore this for now and then maybe later they remove those comments which is what we'll do. So that's a comment, two forward slashes, it grays out the entire line, anything I type on that line. Okay, anyway, so let's go into function and now I'm going to show you how we can actually get user input. Now this is a little bit of a process, but it's not that hard, but what we need to do is create a scanner object. Now my autocomplete is telling me pretty much what I'm going to type, but I'm going to call this scanner and I'm going to let this implicitly infer what the type is of whatever I type now. So that's what this walrus operator does. We talked about that in the last video and the type or what I'm going to put here is actually going to be buff IO dot new scanner with OS dot STD in. Now, I know this is kind of a mouthful for a line and it looks look a little bit confusing, especially for some of you beginners. But what this means is from the buff IO module, which I believe is buffered input output, could be wrong on that, but I think that's what that stands for. We're going to make a new scanner object that is uh, that has in here os.std in. So OS stands for operating system. That's this module and STD in pretty much means like the input, <laughs> like the command line where we're typing in. So that's how you set this up. Don't worry about it too much, uh, but this is how you make a scanner object, which we'll need to use in just a second. Okay, so now that we've created a scanner object, if we actually want to scan what the user typed, what we do is we say scanner dot scan with a capital S like that. This will scan the line and we'll actually store inside of this scanner object what the text is that was scanned. So what we typed in. Now, what we do, if we want to actually store the value of what was scanned is we make a variable, I'm going to call it input, and we set it equal to scanner dot text. So you can see that we have scanner is equal to a scanner object, we scan the line, and then we store that in the variable input. So that is pretty much the basics. And now that we've done that, all we have to do is print out what we typed in just to make sure that it was working. So I'll say FMT dot And we will say you typed colon um, percent Q comma input. So pretty much no, not input scanner, just input. What I want to do is let the user type something in, then I just want to print out what they typed in. So let's have a look at how this works. Let's go down here, go run tutorial dot go. Let me start typing here. So hello, I type hello, boom, you typed hello. So we can successfully grab the input from a line. The way this works is as soon as you hit enter, it will scan that line and then we'll start reading the next line. So we wait on this line until you hit enter and then we continue and we go down to here where we actually get the text and then we print it out. Pretty straightforward. Now, the only thing is sometimes I want to have a prompt before I type. So I want to say, ask a question. So I want it to say like, type your name, colon, and then they can add their name. If I want to do something like that, all I have to do is just print before I scan. So I'll say fmt.printf and here I'll say type something like that. So colon, I'm going to do a space just to make sure that when I start typing, I'm one space away from the colon that I don't smush with the colon. So I'll do that. And now if I run here, so go run tutorial.go, we get to type something, let's say hello world, if I spell world correctly, and you typed hello world. So that is the basics. That is how we scan and get something in. 
Now, the only thing is what I want to do is actually ask the user for the year that they were born. So ideally, what I'm going to do is say, what year were you born? We're going to subtract, so we're going to take 2020, subtract that year, and then tell them how old they are. So let's start with that problem. So I'm going to say type um, date, uh, what is it? Type the year you were born. I'm sure there's a better way to say this, maybe your year, uh, your birth year or something like that, but we'll just do that. So type the year you were born, we'll scan it in, uh, and then we'll print it out. Now the issue is though, what type is what I'm passing in? So what type is the stuff that I type in? That's what I'm trying to ask. Uh, is it a number? Is it whatever I type? Is it different? Does it change? Well, the answer is actually that whatever we type in from the scanner here will automatically be stored as a string. So even if I type in like 4.5, which we know is a float floating point number, it actually gets interpreted as a string when we type it in or when the scanner grabs it. So we need to actually convert whatever it is that we type in to a number before we can perform any arithmetic operations on it. So before we can add, subtract, multiply, and treat it as an int or a number, before we can do that, we need to convert the string into a number. So let me just show you what I mean and, and what issue is going to pop up. So we say input equals scanner.txt. Now, what I'm actually going to do is I'll say, let's print you typed the digit of 2020 minus input. Uh, and we'll actually say you are, you will be percent D years old at the end of 2020. Okay, so that's my string. And then the formatting is 2020 minus input, right? I mean, in theory, this should work because if inputs a number and we type it in and say, uh, say I type 2000, that's the year I was born. Well, this will tell me that you will be 20 years, 20 years old at the end of 2020, or at least that's what we hope. So let's just see what happens when I save this. Okay, I save it. And what do we get? So there's an error over here. And this says cannot convert 2020 type untyped number to type string. So input, this variable here is actually a string, which means we need to convert it, which is what I've been saying. So that's just the proof. I wanted to show you that here. So how do we go ahead and actually convert this? Well, what I do is I use this string conv that I've brought in. So I'm going to take away these, uh, what is it, two slashes here, so the comment. And I'm going to change input to be string conv dot and in this case we're actually going to say parse and notice that a few options pop up so parse float parse bool parse int parse uint we're going to parse an int of scanner.txt like that what this is going to do and we need to add a little bit more to this but ideally what this is going to do is it's going to take whatever's in here which will be the text that we scanned that we typed in and it will convert it to an integer that is of base 10 and size 64. So what we need to do when we create this string dot parse int is we need to pass the text that we want to parse. Notice I'm passing scanner dot text, but I could very easily pass 10 like this. So that string, we need to pass the base. So is this octal binary uh, hexadecimal or decimal? In this case, it's decimal, which is base 10. And then we pass the size of the integer we want to store, which is 64. So I'm going to go back to the uh, the string comp here. So scanner dot text. And now let's see if we get any errors when I save this. So we look at this, I'll give it a second to load. And what is the issue here? So parse in interprets a string S in a given base 0 to 63rd and bit size 0 to 64 and returns the corresponding value I. Uh, so this looks to me like this should work, but apparently it is not. Mismatch one variable uh, returns two values. Okay, so what I actually need to do here, sorry, is put an underscore. Now what this is gonna do if I save, and sorry, this syntax is confusing. So sometimes I don't want to introduce it if I don't have to. But what this is going to do is say, if for some reason we can't take this text and convert it into this input, we're going to actually raise an error and it will store that right here where I put this underscore. But since I actually don't really care about the error, I'm just going to put an underscore, which says pretty much ignore it. So if this doesn't work, um, just to kind of ignore that and move on. That's what that's saying for now. We'll talk more about this syntax later on, but the idea is that this returns an error if this doesn't work. So if I don't type a number and it tries to parse a number and it can't do it, it will return an error. That error would usually go to the variable I put right here. So input comma, uh, whatever the variable is, but since I don't care about it, I'm putting an underscore. Okay, so let me run this now and let's see if we can actually get this to work. So go run tutorial.go. And let me type. So I was born in the year 2000, 
which means you'll be 20 years old at the end of 2020. So that does indeed work. And that should actually work for any year that we type in. So let's run this one more time. Uh, let's just do like a 1960 or something. So 1960, you'll be 60 years old at the end of 2020. Let's run this once more and let's try not a number. So let me try hello. Well, at the end of this year, you will be uh, 20, 20 years old. <laughs> so that's because what happens is when there's an error and it cannot parse a number, it can't find one, this input string will be empty. And that means 2020 minus nothing. So minus zero, right, uh, is 2020. So that's what it's printing out. But yeah, that has pretty much been the tutorial. I showed you how to get user input, how to convert a string to text. That's what this line is doing right here. And then how we can format that and print that out. So hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next GoLang tutorial.